this is fun. Is this working? I mean, I've just been talking. Yup, it is. Alrighty. It's phenomenal. Still says zero viewers up here. Fantastic. All right. Let's get this started, shall we? All right. Let me just pull up my PowerPoint window here. Fantastic. Hello there, everyone. This is Nicholas here, but you can call me Mr. B. I'm a jazz arranger, composer, and pianist. And today we're going to be talking about understanding arranging and your getting started on your first arrangement. So let's jump right into this. Before we start, I'd like to thank Resonate Music for making these lessons possible. Resonate Music is an organization that helps provide free music lessons for children in under underprivileged communities. So make sure to go check out their website at resonatemusic.org and definitely donate if you're able to. All right, let's get on with it. Now let's start with the first main question here. What is arranging? You know, is it like orchestration? Is it like putting notes on a paper? Is it like playing my instrument? What is it? Well, I could tell you about definitions all day long, but the best way to do it is to really show you what arranging is. So brief, def brief definition right now as I'm going. Arranging is taking the melody and the chords of a song and then using those and making something different or new. So for an example, we're going to use La Vie en Rose. So let's listen to the original song right now. Des yeux qui font baisser les miens, un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche, voilà le portrait sans retouche de l'homme auquel j'appartiens. So we'll, we'll stop there for now. So let's move over to this piano arrangement that I did for a talent show a little while ago. So as you can see here, I've rearranged it for a solo piano. So let's take a listen to that. We'll stop there for now. So as you can see, it's the same song. It's still La Vie en Rose. It's just, instead of having the, the whole string section and the clarinet solo and the singer, it's just me playing the piano. So that's arranging at a more minuscule scale. Now let's talk about big band arranging, or arranging for larger ensembles, which is much more popular than piano arranging. So for this example, we're going to use the song Still Alive from the video game Portal. Not sure if you've played that before. But we're going to start off this time listening to the arranged version first by the 8-bit big band. So let's give this a listen. This was a triumph I'm making a note here A huge success it's hard to overstate my satisfaction. So we'll just stop there for now. So as you can see, this version sounds very Sinatra. You'd almost think it's the original, as if Sinatra himself went and sang this song, you know, 40 years ago, and now they're covering it right now. But let's take a listen to the original song, and you'll see how different it is. This was a triumph I'm making a note here Huge success It's hard to overstate my satisfaction Aperture science We do what we must because we can For the good of all of us Except the ones who are dead But there's no sense crying over every mistake You just keep on trying till you run out of cake And the science gets done And you make a neat plan for the people who are still alive 
So you, you can very clearly hear that that's definitely very different from this, even though it's the same song. So let's go back to this version. Aperture science. Do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep on trying until you run out of cake. And the science gets done, and you make a neat gun for the people who are still alive. So you can very clearly hear the difference between the two versions. And that right there is arranging. That's arranging. You take a song and you make it completely different. So if, if you're not listening closely, sometimes can't even tell it's the same. Now that's all fine and dandy who you ask, but what's a real world example of arranging? Well, I'm glad you asked. Arranging is very much used in film scoring. And so for this example, we're gonna be using the movie Ratatouille by Pixar, one of, one of my favorite movies of all time. Now in, in film scoring, composers use this arranging technique to take their similar motifs and phrases and, you know, make music for the entire two-hour-long movie instead of just five-minute-long songs. So let's take a listen to this first song, which kind of defines the tune. This one's called Le Festine. I think that's good for now. So you get the feel of the song. Now let's go on to this next scene, which is earlier in the movie. I have to skip forward a little bit though, so. Alright, it's coming up. Keep your ears open. Ready? And now. So you hear that, it's definitely different. It's more of a waltz feel, not the whole song feel. But it's the same melody, the same chords, just arranged differently. And now a third example here is at the very end of the movie. Let's listen. It was a great night, <laughs> the happiest of my life. But the only thing predictable about life is its unpredictability. Well, we had to let Skinner and the health inspector loose. And of course they ratted us out. The food didn't matter. Once it got out, there were rats in the kitchen. Oh, man. The restaurant was closed, and Ego lost his job and his credibility. But don't feel too bad for him. He's doing very well as a small business investor. He seems very happy. How do you know? Yeah. Ah, gotta go. Dinner rush. So you hear right there how there, the melody was there played by an accordion or some other sort of instrument like that. And it even transitioned back into the original song, showing you just how similar the themes are throughout the entire movie. So that's another real world example of arranging. Now what's next? The things you're gonna need to know. What are some things that you should know when we're going through these lectures so you're not like completely lost? Well, for starters, I'm understanding, so I'm assuming that you play some sort of melodic instrument, so a piano, saxophone, clarinet, trombone, any old instrument like that. Drums, I wouldn't say as much because there's not much melodic understanding, you know. Reading sheet music is also a necessity because we're going to be writing sheet music. So that would definitely help. Also, if you don't play one of these instruments, but you would want to learn how to arrange and want to learn how to play an instrument, once again, head on down to resonatemusic.org and come, get in touch with somebody and we'll get you set up with a lesson. All right, let's keep going. Now, through these video lectures, the end goal is to have you all writing arrangements for full jazz ensembles, well, jazz arrangements for full jazz ensembles. 
Now, that's not to say that you won't know how to arrange for any other type of, you know, orchestration. Like, if you want to arrange for concert band or orchestra or bluegrass band even, the principles of, you know, harmonizing and arranging are the same. It's just, you know, the little things that change how you go about doing it. So for this example, we're going to be going through jazz arranging because that's my specialty. So here we have the layout of a traditional jazz band. We have our five saxes in the front, four trombones behind them, and four trumpets behind them, and then four rhythm section off to the side here. We're going to we're going to do one or two sections per lecture, and today's section is going to be the trumpet section. Yay! How exciting! I've chosen the trumpet section because it's generally easier to write for than the other sections, considering it has the melody often, and its range is quite broad, and it's in a melodic range, definitely. So one thing you should know about trumpet, it is a B-flat transposing instrument, meaning that the notes it reads are different than the notes that would sound on a piano. So if you were to play a C on a trumpet, it would actually sound as a B-flat on a piano. Now let's talk about range for the trumpet. The trumpet reads from about low B to B-flat all the way up to a high D, and technically above that if your lead player is good enough. So in concert pitch, that's about A to A-flat, all the way up to C above the staff and beyond. You'll notice I have a smaller note beneath each of these lower notes, because that's the technically the lowest note the instrument can play. Although I wouldn't recommend writing that low, considering it gets, it's very difficult to make you know, consistent sounds at the lower end of the register. Also, there's a lower top note as well, and that's the range we're going to be writing for in today's lesson. We're going to assume our lead trumpet players are just okay, you know, not professionals, but they have a decent range. All right, let's get on with this. The next step now is to head on over to musescore.org, this link right here, and we're going to download MuseScore because that's what we're going to be using to write our arrangements. So you can click on this link. should bring us into Google Chrome right now. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Head on over to musescore.org and definitely download this. This is my software of choice. I use it for all of my arrangements, and it's very beginner-friendly, and it's free. So win, 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 win. So definitely take some time, download this right now, get her all set up, you know. I'll just wait here while you do that, it's okay. But don't take too much time though, because we do have we do have a schedule to get to follow here. I'd rather not make this run, you know, way too long. But let's alright. Take your time, download it, downloading, 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 downloading. Run the installer. It should run. And then boot it up. Like, and then, before you boot it up, or actually after you boot it up, it's totally okay. The next part of our PowerPoint is I'd like you to join our Google Classroom as well. I have a Google Classroom set up where you can download all the files we'll be using for this lesson, as well as submit some assignments where I'll be giving some feedback as well. Whoops. That's okay. I didn't say whoops. That's okay. Here's our class code right here for, for that as well, once you're ready for it. I'll take some time here. It's all right. In no rush. Let's put on some nice background music, shall we? Let's see, what can we listen to? I'm thinking some more arrangements. Let's put on this nice arrangement. Nice and quiet. Just while you get yourself ready. Let me just check the chat to see if anybody's saying anything. So that we all know. Four people watching, that's an accomplishment, wow. That's really cool. So take some time, download it, join the Google Classroom. Once somebody joins this, I'll move on to the next section. Loud, actually. A little bit. Ready? Anybody yet? Not yet, that's okay. We got a question. What exactly is the purpose of arranging music instead of using the original music? Well, I went over that a little bit earlier, so you may have been a late person to get there. But arranging music is taking the music and changing it. So A for covers. It's also very useful in film scoring. Let me just go back to my slide right here. As you can see, let me just stop that music. Oh, no, it's very relaxing. So you can, let's analyze it one more time here. This is the original theme, as you can see, the original theme in the movie. <laughs> so 
you can hear the melody right there, Mr. Attacking Toads. And now let's take a listen to this next scene, which has that same theme except arranged differently. I hope you heard right there. You can see it's the same theme, except the, mel the rhythms are changed a little bit. Same notes, same chords, whole different song, as you can tell. Whole different feel. It's not like a fun-loving French song. It's a, it's a waltz, right? He's, he's coming up and he's seeing the whole world. It's lush strings. It's beautiful. And that, Mr. Attacking Toads, that is arranging in its finest form. All right, we got one student, so I'm going to keep going now. I'm going to move on. Remember, the class code is right here. I'm going to read it out for you. J-I-2-7-D-6-T. Oh, yeah, and it's in the chat as well, so you can copy and paste it from there. Whoa, you can make it full screen, too. That's cool. All right, so when you're in here, you're going to want to download trumpet, trumpet writing practice number one and trumpet writing practice number two. Now, if you have no experience with music score, or sorry, let me go back a little bit. If you use another software like Finale or Sibelius or Dorico or Lilypond or literally any other music notation software, you're going to want to download this file, .mxl, and then load that into your software. But for all the rest of you guys, we're going to download Trumpet Writing Practice number one. Trump number one and number two, .mscz. All right. So I'm going to head into MuseScore right now, right here. Boom. This will be Trumpet Writing Practice number one. This is what you should see on your screen right now. Maybe it'll be a little bit different, might not be black, might not have all these things open, but that's okay. Once you're all inside, I'm just going to wait a little bit, you know, give you some time to get into the software, get through the tours, skip through everything. It's all good. So, well, for these early lessons, we're just going to be talking about what's called orchestration, not necessarily arranging just yet, because you have to learn orchestration first, writing for all the different sections, and then we learn arranging. So once we know all the techniques on how to write for all the different parts, then we know what sounds good where, and we know how to add, you know, we know which melodies to put for trumpets or for a clarinet section or for a, you know, a blend of the saxophones. For now, we're going to talk about trumpets. So we have our four trumpets here from our jazz band section, and we have a whole little, a little rhythm section right here. So I'm going to play this for you so you can just hear the melody. This is from the song, All the Things You Are. So let's give it a listen. So there's the melody right there, the whole thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this melody and we're going to do what's called harmonizing it. So we're going to take these chords and we're going to write them for these notes. Isn't that so cool? Totally cool. So as we know, all these seventh chords are all written, all jazz chords are written in four voices. Seventh chord, so if we pull up my piano keyboard right here, we have F, A flat, C, E flat. There's our F minor 7 chord. B flat minor 7, B flat, G, F, A flat. That's our, our four voices. And that's why we have four instruments per section, you know, four rhythm section, four trumpets, four trombones. There are five saxes. We'll talk about that in a later episode when I'm working on the saxes. But for now, we're talking about trumpets. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go here. We're going to click on our first note. And we're going to click on our note input button right up here. This lets us input notes with our mouse. And we're going to build the remaining notes inside this F minor 7 chord. So F minor 7, we know, has F, A flat, C, and E flat. So we're going to fill in those notes beneath this note. So A flat beneath that becomes F, and then E flat, and then C, like that. Now we have our F minor 7 chord. So we play that. Hear that? Now it's that note is harmonized. We're going to go to our next note. Click our note input button. We're going to go up to this rhythm selection panel and make sure we have the correct rhythm selected. See, this is a dotted half note, but we have a whole note selected. So we go to 
half note, and then rhythm dot right here, or augmentation dot. And we're going to build the B flat minor 7 chord beneath that. So we have our D flat on top, so beneath the D flat comes the B flat, then the A flat, then the F. And now we're going to go back and select our quarter note, because the next note is a quarter note. So quarter note. And then we gonna, we're going to build that same chord, except with an A flat on top this time. So A flat, beneath that is F, beneath that is D flat, and beneath that is B flat. Also, before I go any further, make sure you have this concert pitch button turned on. It's a little bit cropped out right there, you can see. But this, this, this concert pitch button should definitely be on. Otherwise, you're going to be writing in the whole wrong key, which is no, no good. But now we're moving on to the next chord, which is an E flat major 7 chord. We know that chord has E flat, G, B flat, and D. So we're going to build that chord beneath the top note, which is the G, the melody note. So G, E flat, B, natural. So we're going to press the up arrow key when we click on our B right there. So it's a, so this natural key. Alternatively, what you could do is you could go in here and find the section called accidentals and drag this little thing right there. Do that. And then we click in our B. Boom. There's our one chord. And now we're going to do that three more times for these remaining notes because it's still an E flat major 7 chord. E flat, B, D, and then B flat. So you can see we don't need to add back accidental twice because it's already over here. And then we keep going all the way down. Three, one, two, three. There we go. We're, like, we're almost halfway through. Now we're going to build our A flat major 7 chord with this G. So you know, A flat major 7 has A flat, C, E flat, and G. Also, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. I, I, have no way to let, I have no way to know if I'm going too fast or too slow. So we're going to keep, we're going to build that A flat major 7 chord on this G. So G, next is E flat, then C, then A flat. And then next is this C. So we're going to go C, down to A flat, then to G, then to E flat. And then back to G. And then we're going to do the same chord over here because it's the same inversion. G, E flat, C, A flat. Now next chord, D flat major 7. We know the, chord, the, the notes in that chord are D flat, F, A flat, and C. So F, D flat, C, A. Because we're building the chord down. So we're going to do that three more times again because it's the same note all the way through. Like that, there we go. And then now we want to move the page over a little bit so we can't see. We're going to make sure we turn off our note input right here. And you're going to grab anywhere that's not a staff. So in between the staffs, and just start dragging your mouse. Whoop, look at that. Then we moved. Now we're going to go back to our note input. Make sure our chord is selected for this one. And put in our G7. And our G7 chord has G. B natural, D natural, and F. So we're going to put in our D. Make sure to press our up arrow key so it's a natural. And then we're going to put in our D and push the up arrow key again to make sure that it's also natural. And then our G beneath that. Now the same thing for this with, with the B. So beneath the B, and the next, next note beneath the B is the G. Then the F. Then the D. Like that. And then we have another F right here, so we're going to go back to our quarter note. Click that in. Excuse me, click that in again. Two, three, four. And our last chord is a C major 7, so we're going to go back, pick our whole note option, and build our C major 7. So we have E, then we have C, then B natural, so remember to press the up arrow key, so the natural shows up, and then a G right there. Ba -ba -boo right there. Sorry about that. We're going to turn our note input off. Hit the big old save button right here so that we don't lose all our work, hard work we just did. The asterisk should go away like that. And then 
If we go back, click our first measure right here, and we're going to press this play button and listen to what we've done. All right, do it with me now. Nice. And now the final step to completing this is we're going to click our first measure and we're going to hold our shift key down and click our last measure. So you may, you may have to scroll a little bit to reach that. And last measure right there. Boom. So it's all blue and all selected. And then we're going to go up to tools right here. And we're going to click explode. And so what that does is it spreads out the chords that we just wrote and it divides the notes up all along these stabs right here. So now you see it'll sound the same if you play it back. But now each player, trumpet one, trumpet two, trumpet three, trumpet four, they all have their own respective notes. All right, so we'll save that again one more time, make sure we don't lose our work, and then play it back one more time. Right on, that's pretty good. All right, now look at that. We've finished our first project. This is what we're going to be doing for the next one as well. The next one's a little bit different, though. Here we are. I want you to now open up trumpet writing practice number two. I already have it open, but I want you to go ahead and open that next file right there. It should look a little something like this. So this is what's called the lick. It's a jazz lick, technically. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to harmonize it like we just did the last one. So our, we're going to... We're going to click our eighth note, turn on note input, click our eighth note, and build the chord written out. See? B flat minor seven. See, there's a B flat right there, so we can build off of it. We're going to go A flat, sorry, then F, then D flat. Now our next note is a C. That's not good. There's no C in the B flat minor seven. Oh no, what do we do? Well, not to worry. There are ways you can go about this. The next logical step, if the note in your phrase doesn't match the chord, what you want to do is you want to look for the dominant or the fifth note of that first chord and then build the seventh chord for that one. So we have B flat. The fifth of B flat is F. So we're going to try an F minor 7. Does an F minor 7 work in this? Does F minor 7 have a C? Yes, it does. So we're going to build our F minor 7 right here. So let's do an F. And then an E flat right there. Now our next note, D flat. That's in B flat minor seven. So we can build our same chord again. B flat, A flat, F. Now the next note, E flat. That's not in, D, in B flat minor seven. Next question, is it in the dominant? Is it in F minor seven? Yes, it is. So we're going to go ahead and build an F minor seven chord beneath that. So we have our E flat already. Then it's C then A flat, and F. And then we have our next chord right here, E flat seven. Is there a C in E flat, is there a C in E flat seven? Well, no, there isn't. Is there a C in B flat seven? No, there isn't, that's a shame. So now what do we do right here, you asking? Well, what you can do is make it the ninth chord. It's always an option. So instead of having our seventh chord, our B flat, an E flat, a B flat minor seven, we'd have a B flat minor nine. I'm going to turn my note input off. If you look at the little keyboard right at the bottom here, if I bring that up for you, I'm going to put B flat, F, F, A flat. I'm going to add the ninth to that, which is the C. So we only have room for four voices in jazz, so we get rid of the bottom B flat. So it just becomes a D flat major seven. Let's give that a listen. Let's, now let's pencil that chord in and see how that sounds. All right? So we're going to go C, whoopsie, C, A flat, F, D flat. Now, is there an A flat in B flat major 7? I mean, in E flat 7? No, there isn't. Yes, there is. I'm sorry. Pardon me. Is there an A flat in E flat 7? No, unfortunately, there isn't. Next question, is there an A flat in B flat minor 7, which is the dominant of E flat? Yes, there is. So we're going to go to our 8th note button right here and, do our, and build our B flat minor 7 beneath that. A flat, F, D 
flat, B flat. Now our last chord, A flat major seven. There's no B flat in A flat major seven, unfortunately. But there is a B flat in A flat major nine. So we're, so we're gonna use B flat major nine for this one. So let's do that. So we're gonna build our, so we have our ninth chord. I'm gonna turn my note input off for a second here. So you see we have the B flat seven, and then we build, we put the ninth on top and get rid of the bottom note. C minor 7. So let's pen write that in. G, E flat, C. Nice. Now we're going to go back over here to our whole note. Make sure our whole note is selected. And build that same chord again. So C, E flat, C. And then we're going to click tie for each of these notes so that the note ties over. And now let's make sure we save that again. We don't want to lose our hard work. And let's give that a listen. Now that sounds interesting. The difference with this one is that we use different chords for each note. So it's not the same repeated chord. as, For example, in this one, we have the same chord being repeated four times. Which is kind of boring. But in this one, we have four different chords for four different notes. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Now, the last step, as always, is to select our two measures. The quick last measure, shift, first measure. We're going to go up to tools and hit explode. We'll play it one, save it again so we don't lose our hard work. And then. Now, that sounds pretty cool, don't you think? I definitely think so. Right on. This is going great. Now, are there any questions before we keep going? If there are, put them in the live chat right now, and I'll answer them right now. Sorry, I have my phone on my keyboard right here. I'm going to push one of the keys down. But let's see. Check the Google Classroom here. Nice. We got two people in here. One other person joined. Phenomenal. I am so glad you're here. Hopefully everything's going okay. If you guys still need more time, that's totally all right. We're in no rush here. So I'm going to put that music back on. So it's very relaxing. This is actually an arrangement by the people who did the Still Alive cover that I used in the beginning of the PowerPoint, 8-Bit Big Band. They've got a lot of great arrangements. If you ever want to study jazz arranging, definitely look up some of their charts. They've got some great, some really, really great arrangements. One of them being this one. Alright, if you guys are good for me to keep going, then just put a little go-ahead right in the chat. Or if you don't, I'm going to keep going in like a minute. Go ahead, we got the go ahead. Fantastic. So now comes the unfortunate time when we're nearing the end of the lecture. Now I'm gonna be assigning some homework. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is head on over to the Google Classroom and go to this assignment called Trumpet Assignment One. This is gonna be the homework for today. Sorry, let me go back to instructions. Here we go. This is the assignment for the first lesson. Using the things we talked about during this video lecture, Take the melody in the below.mscz file and orchestrate it for four trumpets. Just a reminder, these assignments, they're not mandatory or graded. However, if you submit something, I'll be taking a look at it and I'll give you some feedback or compliment you if you do such an amazing job. 
yeah so make sure you guys download that i'll show you what that looks like right now if i can find it yeah trumpet writing practice nope that's the wrong one trumpet homework here it is so what i've done is i've, I've took the fly me to the moon by the one that frank sinatra has sung see it's three pages right here listen to if i'm gonna listen let's listen to it together right now So that's the entire melody right there. As you can see, Bruce the Fowl got a little bit corrupted and didn't put these ties in here. Just make sure you do that for when you when you have it downloaded. And yeah, so just remember what we did for this one and this one. We're going to apply those same principles, you know, building the chords, you know, especially in the secondary dominance if they're not in the same chord. And yeah, go crazy with it. Let's do the first couple measures together. Let's do the first four measures together right now. Let's start. C minor seven, all right? Is there an E flat in C minor seven? Yes, there is. So we just build the C flat minor seven beneath that. Right there, we've built our C minor seven right there. Now next note, D. Is there a D in C minor seven? No, unfortunately there isn't. Now let's look to the dominant chord, G minor seven. Yes, there is. Let's build our G minor 7 chord right here. Is there a C in C minor 7? Yes, there is. We build our C minor 7 chord. Is there a B flat in C minor 7? Yes, there is. So we just build our C minor 7 chord. Now, A flat. Is there an A flat in F minor 7? Yes, there is. So we're going to keep doing this. I'm going to build that same chord, remember, selecting the proper rhythm each time. A flat C. And then we're going to turn our note input off, and we're going to put ties on each three of these notes. So, tie, tie, tie. Good. We're going to save that periodically because we don't want to lose what we've been working on. Now let's do this. Is there a B flat in F minor 7? No, there isn't. Is there a B flat in the dominant of F minor 7? which is C minor seven, and yes, there is. So let's build that chord. Is there a C in F minor seven? Yes, there is. So we're gonna build the F minor seven chord beneath that. E flat in F minor seven? Yes, there is. Build our F minor seven chord right beneath that. Next, our B flat seven chord right here. Is there a B, is there a D in B flat seven? Yes, there is. So we're gonna we're gonna build our chord beneath that. So B flat. Whoops. B flat. A flat. F. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here because the notes are tied. Remember, we're gonna turn our note input off, and then click on ties for each note, just like this. Boom. 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 Like that. And then. Now. Is there a C in B flat seven? No, there isn't. Is there a C in the dominant of B flat seven, which is F F minor seven? Is there a C? Yes, there is. So we're gonna build that chord. Is there a B flat in B flat seven? Hmm, I don't know. Is there? Yes. Yes, there is. Is there an A flat? Yes, there is. Right there. As you can see right here, we have the E flat chord. So we're just going to build. This is no, this is a special occasion because the E flat chord is a triad. It's not a it's not a four note chord. So whenever we see that, and it, so you see right now we're in the key of E flat major or C minor. So we can use E flat major seven. I'm going to pencil that in right now. We can use E flat major seven because we're in we're in E flat major. 
So we're going to build our E flat major 7 beneath that. Right there. And the problem is, if you can see here, it changes chords by through the bar. So what we need to do, this is a special, make sure you're paying attention. You click on our note that's going to change. And we're going to click this button right here, the number 2. Boom. Now these are in separate voices, which means we can make this a half note, and these stay as whole notes. And then here, we click on the second half rest that popped up. And we're going to put in a D flat. Right like that. Now you might have a couple of, you might have some trouble when you're um, uh, exporting, when you're exploding this. And so that's okay. If it ends up getting all messed up, just fix it by hand. So for example, if I just show you how to, if I explode this measure right now, you'll see it didn't quite work that well. So, so what you're going to do in this scenario is you're going to want to do what's, you're going to want to cut this. So you're going to do right click, cut, or control X and then explode this. See, boom, now we can see their missing voice goes there. So we'll leave it here to the side, and then take this, cut that, paste it right there, and now cut this, paste it right there. Now you could always use the keyboard shortcuts, so Control C, Control X, Control V. I'm using the, the mouse just so you can see. So now you can see it's exploded properly. Now when you're finished this assignment, sorry, I shouldn't say assignment because it's not really an assignment. When you're finished this, um, you want to head over to Google Classroom and drop it into the box right here. And I'll take a look at it and I'll tell you, great job. Also, if you finish this in like 15 minutes and you've got loads of extra time, another thing you can do is you can take these rhythms and you can change them up a little bit. So like make this a dotted note. See how it changes. So let's just get rid of these notes in the piano right now. So you can see right there, it was a little bit different right there. So if you want to go around and try and add some changes to it, go right ahead. You know, take some, take some chances. Give it a shot. Worst case, it just sounds a little bad. And then you go back and fix it later. Music and creation is all about trial and error. People will say the songs just come to you. But it's really about figuring out what sounds good and then using what sounds good. Now, unfortunately, this reaches, this concludes our live stream. Thank you so much to everybody that ended up watching this. I'm, I'm so glad that you came out here. Remember to join the Google Classroom. Definitely download MuseScore if you haven't already. And that's it from me. Let me just pull up my, my last slide of my PowerPoint right here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back next Thursday when we'll be talking about the other sections, so trombones and saxophones. We're we'll learning more about those and doing some of the same things we've done today, except for the trombone section and for the saxophone section. Thanks so much for watching. This is Nicholas.